Okay, students. Good morning. Once again, this is Good Monday, and you are floating with me in the world of physics. As you can see, that uh, my topic is going on surface tension, which is the part of the chapter mechanical properties of the solids or materials. So, uh, because we have come here uh, under the uh, properties of the fluids and the property is surface tension. Basically, it is your chapter. So, in this chapter, I have uh, completed your definition of surface tension, means what is surface tension, and uh, with the help of surface tension, how we can find out the force on the surface experienced by the molecules which is at the surface. Also, we can uh, calculate how much work done against uh, against that force. Okay, so uh, I think uh, you are remembering something. As in case of mechanics, we have uh, firstly studied about the force. Uh, after that, we have studied about the work done. Work done basically force into displacement, and then after that we have a property that is the pressure it means uh, pressure equal force upon area so the same scenario the same pattern we are following here also firstly we have uh, uh, learned what is uh, surface tension with the help of surface tension we have calculated we have calculated the force then we have calculated the surface energy surface energy basically is the work done and after that work done, now we are uh, going to calculate the pressure. As we have already told you that uh, when the uh, work done is uh, uh, going on, it means so you can say that when the uh, molecules which are deeper inside the liquid tries to come to the surface, then the work done is negative. Or in other words, we can say that uh, the potential energy increases. So, if uh, the potential energy increases, then uh, is their pressure also increases? Yes, absolutely right. So, because pressure is nothing but uh, work upon area, so we have to see here what type of work done, what type of forces are participating here. So let us get started. This is our topic and the topic is excess pressure inside the drop. As you can see that uh, firstly we have to consider a, a spherical drop. So consider a, a spherical drop of liquid of radius capital R as you can see in the figure. This is your diagram. Okay. So in this diagram basically it is assumed that the drop is small and the uh, effect of gravity is neglected. Why? Because uh, due to effect of gravity, maybe uh, the shape of the drop will be like uh, this way. Okay. Means uh, it may have some pointed edge below and the larger edge on the above side. This is the effect of gravity. But if we neglect the effect, then the shape of the drop will be completely spherical. Okay. Now, imagine a diametric cross section. So, a diametric cross section is A, B, C, D. As you can see, A, this is your A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So, it is a cross section, means you can simply uh, say that it is a uh, finite very thin wire type structure or very thin line a b c d and uh, that line divides the drop into two hemi spheres so this line basically we can say the cross section okay basically we can say that it is circumference so this uh, divides the uh, drop into two hemispheres. Okay, 
so as you know that when we cut the sphere then we get the hemispheres okay means half sphere is called hemispheres the surfaces of the two hemispheres touch each other along the periphery a b c d a it means a b c d and a this is the common periphery or you can say the common line or you can say common uh, circumference for the both hemispheres one is your a b uh, one is your a b c d e and one your a b c d and g okay so there are two hemispheres and the two hemispheres uh, are in the condition of a common periphery and the common periphery is a b c d a okay now what as i have told you that to uh, the surface of the liquid has a property that is called surface tension and due to surface tension if there is a periphery or a line then uh, f upon f and that is surface tension so basically f that will be s multiplied by capital x means that is surface tension force per unit length and here length is the periphery means a b c d this is your periphery okay whatever the length of that periphery or we can say the circumference this is also for the circumference so uh, if we know the circumference we know the surface tension then there must be a force okay and that force tries to pull the hemispheres towards each other okay so we can simply say that this sphere will move toward the this sphere and this sphere move toward this one sphere means if you talk about a sphere uh, a b c d e and the other sphere is the a b c d g okay like this way so if one is a b c d e and other is a b c d g then two spheres will move towards the each other and the uh, reason is surface uh, surface tension okay now what we have a condition of equilibrium because as we know that uh, the periphery divides the hemisphere into equal parts and that periphery is in equilibrium condition means so uh, if this is your sphere or a spherical drop and this is your periphery like this way then this periphery will not moving towards this sphere or that sphere means it is uh, at a fixed position so we can simply say that uh, either there are forces applicable by the two uh, hemispheres towards the each other but the periphery is in equilibrium condition so we have to think about that uh, what type of forces are here and then we will set this condition according to the condition of equilibrium means whatever forces are there that must be equal so firstly talk about the forces which are here first is your force uh, let f1 and that is due to the surface tension of the surface a b c d in contact okay means so uh, you can simply say that uh, if we remove this portion firstly uh, this is periphery okay now if we have uh, only periphery then this periphery has a force f and that is your surface tension times the length of the periphery and that is your f1 okay i hope that is now clear now f2 f2 force is uh, due to the air outside the surface abcd means uh, if we uh, neglect this periphery for some time this is the periphery and this is your 
surface which having the air molecule so it also applies a force like this way you can simply say and the force is f2 and on the other hand we have another uh, spheres which is uh, uh, let's suppose this is your periphery okay that is the common periphery and this is your uh, another hemisphere which is having the molecules of the liquid and it applies a force like this one. and the force is your f3 so here basically three forces are there one is uh, uh, on the periphery second one is uh, uh, due to the molecules of the air and uh, third one is your due to the molecules of the liquid itself okay i hope that this is clear now now what the force due to the surface tension act on the point of the periphery a b c d a the force on any small part dl in this periphery is s d l so as i have told you that if this is your periphery and if you take a small portion here this is your portion dl then you can simply write down that uh, your surface tension that is force upon length and length is a small for a small element of the periphery so it will be dl or f will be your surface tension times dl now for the complete periphery for the complete circumference in place of dl you have to write uh, circumference 2 pi r okay and r is the radius of the sphere or we can say the radius of the spherical drop notice here now one thing is so important that uh, this force which is known as f1 will be acted towards the direction ox means in this direction this is o center of, of the periphery and x is the axis at which uh, we can say the axis passes through point o so ox is the basically the axis of the periphery okay now what this thing is very important remember it that force acted towards the direction of ox and why i am saying like this way because you know that this side is liquid at this it is liquid and here you have air so air molecules exert low pressure or low force liquid molecules will exert higher pressure or higher force so resultant will be in the direction of higher force that's why i am saying that uh, the force of whatever experienced by the periphery that will be toward the higher force or toward the direction of ox okay so now as you can see that uh, now consider the forces due to the air outside the surface a b c d e so as you can see that this is your periphery and this is the sphere which is having air molecules okay and uh, this is your you can say that axis this is the center o this is the x this is your x dash now if this uh, uh, hemisphere which having the air molecules have a, a small surface area we can simply say that uh, let's suppose this area and this area is your ds ds or delta s you can simply say delta s okay so this is small area this is small surface area of the hemisphere is taken in a random direction because if we cut that area on the line on the uh, axis we can say that like this way if the uh, area or we can say the element of the area is on the line ox on the axis 
then we can simply write down that uh, you know that uh, pressure equal force upon area so force will be nothing but pressure into area okay so if pressure is considered as p1 due to air molecules okay and uh, the area is a delta s so f2 uh, f2 f2 is force due to air molecules that will be p1 times delta s but if the element is at a certain uh, angle with the axis then we have to take a component along with the axis so here in place of delta s we have to take delta s cos theta so i hope that uh, this is now clear to all of you and why i am uh, doing this because as you know that if the element is the lower half of the uh, segment then the vertical component of this element will be cancelled out to each other only horizontal component will be added okay so we have uh, force f2 that is p1 times so uh, delta s cos theta this is the uh, force which is due to the air molecules or we can say due to the hemisphere which having the air molecules i hope that this is now clear to all of you now what we have another sphere also as you can say that uh, we have uh, one common periphery and uh, this side you have a, a sphere that having liquid molecules and uh, we consider the pressure here uh, we can simply say that uh, p2 let b and the force is the f2 clear so in the same scenario as i have discussed here then you can write that uh, the force uh, force is f3 for you it's not f2 force is taken as f3 due to the uh, hemisphere having liquid molecule so you can simply write that uh, the pressure equal force upon area and uh, uh, force will be pressure into area so force will be f3 pressure will be p2 and your area means simply pi r because as you can see that uh, the radius of the hemispheres both hemispheres are uh, having the same radius either the molecules are different means one side we have uh, pressure uh, p1 other side we have pressure p2 but the area is same so that's why we have taken area as a and the value is pi r square so after that we can conclude that uh, if the uh, periphery is in equilibrium condition it means whatever force whatever force means force f1 experienced by the periphery that must be equal to the force which is applied by the uh, major portion of the molecule and major portion of the molecules means molecules so major molecules means liquid molecules so we have force that is f1 plus f2 means this is force due to simple periphery this is force due to air molecules and the net force must be equal to f3 and this force is due to liquid molecules so the force due to periphery or we can say due to surface tension the pre the force due to uh, air molecules and the combined force must be equal to the force applied by the liquid molecules okay so we put the value as we know that f1 is 2 pi r s i have already told you f2 that is p1 times pi r square f3 that is p2 times pi r square so we get a result that p2 minus p1 equal to s upon r so p2 first we will get rough it and then i will write like this way that uh, you have p2 minus p1 and this is 2 s upon capital r so p2 is the largest pressure 
okay you can simply say that the p2 is the pressure which is due to the liquid molecule and p1 is the pressure due to the air molecules so it is obvious that the pressure of the liquid uh, liquid molecules will be larger with compared to the pressure of the air molecules okay so this is your final result or you can say this is your excess pressure of the bubble now what in the case of drop there is a liquid on the concave surface this is your concave surface and it has liquid whereas on the concave this is your concave surface and it has air okay so pressure on the concave side is greater and the pressure on the convex side is smaller so this result is true in all cases now we uh, take an example this is your an example let's suppose we have an air bubble inside the liquid this you can see this is your uh, air bubble which is inside the liquid. before it the air is outside the liquid and inside the liquid but the case is reverse the air bubble is inside and outside everywhere there is a liquid now the scene will be reverse it means uh, firstly we have written as the p1 minus p2 okay or we can simply write uh, like this way Uh, if we consider that uh, here that uh, p1 is the pressure due to liquid this is pressure due to liquid and p p2 this is due to air molecules so it is obvious that uh, uh, p1 will be greater than p2 okay so we have a result that is uh, uh, p1 minus p2 and that will be 2s upon capital okay so if uh, it is written that uh, the uh, air uh, molecule is inside the uh, water okay so air molecule has less pressure and the water molecules have the higher pressure so this thing you have to learn very clearly that uh, if we have to calculate the excess pressure it means uh, uh, the larger pressure will be subtracted by the smaller pressure so p1 minus p2 or p2 minus p1 but the result is same and the result is 2s over r now see a numerical based on it here you have to find the excess pressure so excess pressure either you write p2 minus p1 or p1 minus p2 so it will be p2 minus p1 the radius is given radius let us suppose radius is 2 and millimeter so 10 to power minus 3 surface tension s that is 0.464 so basic formula p2 minus p1 that is equal to your uh, 2s upon r this is your formula 2s upon r so put the value this is your 2 and s is 0.464 and divided by r that is 2 and millimeters to 10 to the power minus 3 so to to cancel out so it will be 0.464 into 10 to the power 3 okay so this is basically in pascal and this is your answer so i hope that this question is not clear to all of you now in the next lecture i will discuss about if uh, Uh, if we have a soap bubble in place of the liquid bubble then what will happen as i have already told you that in a simple liquid we have only one surface but in case of soap bubble or soap solution or soap film we have dual surfaces so the pattern will be same the concept will be same but to uh, in place of single surface or single surface area we have to take the dual surface or dual surface area okay so we will discuss that derivation in the next lecture thanks for watching me thanks for listening me thank you very much and uh, please try to solve these derivation 
by yourself. Try to solve the numerical based on this topic. Thank you once again. Best of luck.